welcome back to my channel and to another episode of Real Talk. Real Talk is a little series that I do every now and again where we have a heart to heart and I kind of talk about things that are important to me that you guys want to talk about and that I just feel like I might have some advice or some views that might help you in losing weight, growing out your grey hair, that kind of thing. Nothing too deep. But this video you guys have asked for for ages and I have not really known how to put it together so I've been working on that so thank you for waiting for me this is a talk about my early menopause so if you guys don't know I talk about it fairly freely but it's been going on for such a long time now that I rarely mention it anymore but I'm 43 now 44 in a couple of weeks and I have been going through the menopause since I was 38 years old. I started incredibly young and I did do a video about it, I'll link below some years ago, but I think I was only like a year into my journey, so I was still perimenopausal, but I have been fully menopausal now for around three and a half to four years. So um, I just thought I'd get on here and talk to you a little bit about it. So guys, Let's get into some real talk. So when I was about 37, I was working in central London and I was in a job where I was not particularly happy. The office that I worked in had no air conditioning and I had a very small desk and I was working in customer service. I was dealing with angry people every day. So when I started to get mood swings, I didn't think too much about it because I just thought I didn't like my job. I was just getting angry at people shouting at me all day. Then, <laughs> then came the hot flashes. And again, I put that down to being on the tube every day. You go from hot to cold. I was in the office with no air conditioning. So I was always flying open windows, getting irritable, all this kind of stuff. I didn't think for a second it was menopause because I was 37. So this went on for quite some time, right? I left the job and then I, my period started to get really erratic. And when I say erratic, I mean like I would have a period for like two weeks and then I wouldn't get anything for like two months. I was taking pregnancy tests upon pregnancy tests. I was terrified. And uh, I haven't got children, I don't want children. That's a whole other real talk. If you wanna go down that road, I'm happy to discuss, but it's never been on the radar for me. Same with my partner, he's not interested either. So never wanted children. So I was like, hope it's not pregnancy. Um, because at my age and with my finances, I wouldn't want to be responsible for making that decision. I don't want children, but I'm always certain that I would never be in a situation where I would get myself into that situation, if you get me. So I was getting a bit concerned. So after about four or five months of this going on, I contacted my doctor and I was like, right, I'm not happy with, with what's going on here. Um, I don't know what's happening. So they pulled me in and gave me a blood test. Within three days, they called me and wanted me to come into the surgery to meet them. When I say I was scared, I've had blood tests in the past and I've usually had to chase the doctor. They like, they're so bad, aren't they? They're like, oh yeah, you know, it's fine. If it's fine, they generally don't bother phoning you. So when they called me within three days, I was like, oh Christ, something's really wrong. So I told my partner, he was like, no, 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 it's fine. You feel okay, everything's fine. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. When I got to the doctors, I walked into the surgery, the room, and there were two doctors sitting there waiting to talk to me. At this point, I'm not gonna lie to you, I thought I had cancer. I thought, it, my friend at the time was going through leukemia treatment and I was just, freaking out and I thought I had cancer or something like that and they started this whole talk and they were like oh so you know how are you do you want children I was like right stop have I got cancer and they were like no I was like please tell me why I'm here and they said you're going through perimenopause the relief I cannot begin to tell you I was literally crying with happiness I had no idea what they were telling me, but I said to them, is it life-threatening? They were like, no, this is natural. But, and they explained that normally this is natural for somebody in their late 40s to maybe even early 50s. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. 
And the reason there were two doctors in there was because they knew that I didn't have any children. And I was of an age where if I was considering having children, I need to jump on it immediately. Because if you don't know, when you go through menopause, it's basically the lack of estrogen in your body, which is, I'm not a doctor, but that helps you to get pregnant. So they were there to basically say to me, if you want to have a baby, get it on right now because you haven't got much time left. So that was that. So I walked home and I was happy. They gave me a prescription and I'm still on the same prescription now. I'm on the HRT patches, which are the Everol Conti. And these are a dual patch. So they're a I think it's estrogen and testosterone in this. I will check and put it here because again, I'm not a doctor. I don't really care what's in this because it is magic. As soon as I started wearing one of these, within a day and a half, my mood changed. My hot flashes changed. I got a period again. My body was kind of doing what it was supposed to do and kind of slowing down the process. So immediately I was hooked on the patches. So with these, I change them twice a week. I put them, maybe TMI, I stick them on my butt because I sit at a desk all day and I just don't want them to come off. But you have to kind of put them around your hip area. So I have one butt cheek for one half of the week and another butt cheek for the other half of the week. It's a good, it works for me, it's good. And I have been on those patches now for five years. So they are great. HRT I know can be tricky, you hear some bad things, but I believe now that people are talking a lot more about menopause, there is a lot more positivity around taking hormone replacement therapy. You can take it in oral form. I couldn't because lactose is an active ingredient. That's why I have the patches. You can take a gel. There are all these different things you can have. Um, I have a health check with my doctor every year. They take my bloods to make sure that these patches are still right for me. So I'm constantly being monitored. So I'm very confident that I'm on the right medication for the level of menopause that I am currently going through, because it is quite a long process to go from perimenopause to full menopause. So let's talk about that. So now, at this point in time, 2023, January, I haven't had a period for two and a half years, pretty much. I think my last period was at the beginning of 2020 or something. Um, brilliant. <laughs> Love that for me. Now, when you go through menopause, people say, oh, you pile on weight and you can't stop eating and stuff and it's impossible to lose weight. As you guys know, I have recently just lost about 35 pounds in weight via Slimming World. So that's not true. I do believe with your hormones, if you use food as a crutch, it can make you do this because I do use food as a crutch. I'm fully aware of that. And I did eat my feelings during the pandemic, especially. I can't put it down to the menopause because I think we all put on weight during the pandemic because we weren't moving as much, it was depressing. All we had to look forward to was what takeaways we were gonna get. Remember the days. So now that I've lost weight and I've lost weight, not through dieting, through Slimming World, which I don't consider a diet, the weight has stayed off for the last, what, five months and I will continue doing what I'm doing and it works for me. So as far as menopause and weight gain goes, you just have to be careful. Um, and if you do start to put weight on, stop yourself in your tracks and think, right, what am I doing differently that I didn't do a year ago, six months ago, three months ago, however long you're kind of going through this. Because that's really important to get a hold of it before it really gets a hold of you. Because food does make us feel better. For me, I'm an emotional eater. If I'm sad and I have ice cream or something, it does cheer me up. I'm that person. Um, but honestly, day to day, I don't notice it now. I don't think about it. I don't have hot flashes anymore or anything, mainly because of these amazing little patches. So I, this, is, this is why I struggle to talk about menopause with you guys, because at the beginning, the last video that I did, that to me was all the important stuff. I go to the gym 
and I stay fit because I want my body to see me through until my old age. That's the thing about early menopause is you are at risk of osteoporosis, you are at risk of brittle bones. So I would say take supplements, take calcium supplements, cod liver oil, omega-3, um, eat more fish, eat the foods that you're feeding your body actual nutrients and things that you need. So I eat a lot more green vegetables, I eat a lot more fish, um, I don't eat as much oil in, or have as much oil in my diet anymore because of Slimming World, but I get it from other ways. I do take cod liver oil and I do take calcium every single day. I work out. My exercise has changed cardio wise. I would say if you're menopausal, don't do heavy pavement pounding running. Do swimming, do the cross trainer, do a sit down bike, walk uphill on the cross trainer, but nothing that, that really puts pressure on your knees. Increase weightlifting. You will not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger if you lift heavy weights. I have realized now that since I've lost weight and I lift weights now, my body has gotten smaller. Sorry guys, I'm back. Um, I have to do a little disclaimer. It's a few hours later because I had a washing machine delivered. Sorry. So um, where were we? Weights. So you will not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger if you lift heavy weights. Now I lift around 50 kilograms and I only do it, but I lift, I pull down 50 kilograms. I lift up about 25. So I'm, it's, for me that's heavy, but I'm gradually getting better. I'm gradually trying to lift more. So it makes me sort of smaller here. I feel like my body's kind of smaller, which is great. And I feel stronger, which is the main thing. I also use that machine at the gym where you put your legs against that big plank of metal and you push your legs out. So it's really good for your knees. Anything that strengthens your knees, your joints, anything, just do that. Whatever works for you, push yourself a little bit harder. Make sure that you continue the journey of fitness. That is the main thing. My main takeaway from this is you have to stay active. If you go through early menopause, your body will not thank you for not working out. That's kind of all I have to say, because like I say, guys, for me now, it's been such a long time that I've been going through this. I don't even think about it anymore. The, the important video for me now is the one I did before, because that's kind of the perimenopause journey. Once you've actually gone through perimenopause, it's a breeze. It's just maintenance. I, every now and again, I go and see my um, osteopath for my back and my knees and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, I just, I think just listen to your body, be aware of its changes, keep in touch with your doctor, listen to podcasts. I love Dr. Louise Newton. She has a podcast. Um, I think she's just called the menopause doctor. So that's a good one. Uh, anything with Davina McCall, she's amazing. She did a documentary about the menopause. That's a great one to watch. But everybody's journey is different. I didn't struggle too badly. Thankfully, emotionally, I was fine. I was not ready for menopause, but you know what? It wasn't cancer. It wasn't anything life-threatening. For me, I took that as a major plus. If you can speak to your mum about her menopause journey because it is hereditary. My mum started her menopause at, at 40. So that is important. If you're young and your mum started her menopause early, get yourself checked, get your blood get your blood test done, speak to a doctor because you might need to freeze some eggs if you do want babies and things. These are all things you need to think about. This is something thankfully that I didn't need to think about, but I do sympathise with people that desperately want children but want to wait until their 30s or maybe even early 40s to have them because women now are career people. We do want kids later in life. So that's something to think about. Um, other than that, guys, I'm kind of... That's all I have to share. But honestly, it's not bad. For me, it wasn't bad. My journey was quite easy. Like I say, perimenopause was quite tough at the beginning because I think when I figured out or when I was told I was going through the menopause I had been going through it for like eight or nine months anyway I just didn't listen to my body because at that point in time I was in a job that made me miserable so I was like okay I've got the hump I've got I have mood swings of course I do and you know I was having hot flashes because I was on and off the tube twice a day and I was going in and out of the building with no air conditioning and all that kind of stuff so 
Listen to your body because you never know what it's trying to tell you. Guys, I really hope you found this useful and you know, I'm sorry I'm not a font of information, but I'm just a normal person, like I said, I'm not a doctor. This is just my experience. But if you have any questions, any concerns, feel free to message me below, or if you want to speak privately, DM me on Instagram. I will leave my address here for you. Thank you so much for your support with this and for asking for this video, because I never thought of doing a follow-up for this. Um, the first one didn't do very much numbers and things and there wasn't much commenting on it so I just didn't think it needed a follow-up so I really hope you found this useful thank you so much for continuing to watch me and I will see you next Sunday for another video take care guys see you next week